Welcome to the SPS Digital Learning Hour, brought to you by the Digital Learning and Assessment Department. We're coming to you from a conference room in Central Office, bringing you the latest news in Springfield Public Schools in regards to technology, along with inspiring interviews from teachers who are using technology in the classroom. We'll also inform you of the latest updates, practices, and news as it pertains to our district. Whether you are new to using technology in the classroom or a seasoned vet, we are here to help. Thanks for joining us today. I am your host, Mike Thomas, the Bearded Tech Ed Guy. In case you missed it, the latest blog post is out, and it's all about using TED Talks in the classroom. Now, TED Talks, as you know, and as we talked about last week, are great tools that can help spur deeper discussion and help inspire creativity amongst your students. The prior week, it actually talked about how you can do TED Talks in the classroom in different ways to get your students involved in doing them too. So go check out this blog post. It's out on the We Learn My SPS page. In case you missed it, if you don't go out to My Learning Plan all that often, you might not know of some of the workshops that are coming up available during the We Learn Wednesdays of January. January signups are out there. I do encourage you to go and take a look. There's a lot of great presentations happening, and there's even a unified classroom drop-in. So if you want to learn how to use Class Dojo to create positive classroom culture, give students a voice, and help connect an authentic way to parents, we've got that. If you want to check out some formative assessment tools like Flipgrid, Padlet, Quizzes, Kahoot, Answer Garden, and Poll Everywhere, again, we have that for you too. And if you're looking at how to use Office 365 and Windows 10 more effectively in the classroom, we do suggest coming out to our workshop on that. So these are all out there on WeLearn. You can also check out the links that will be appearing on Yammer. That first one with those four sessions is January 9th. On January 16th, We have another four sessions, how to use Classroom Dojo as more than just a behavior tool. There's a whole lot of great social emotional learning stuff out there. You should come check it out. One note for beginners. So if you're wanting to save paper in your classroom because you've already gone through your entire box for the school year, this is definitely a session for you if you've never used OneNote before. And then there's also another session with Makey Makeys and doing physical computing. So no matter what your coding level is, using Scratch, Makey Makey can connect student work and technology for an interactive experience. You'll learn how to introduce Makey Makey to students and how to make projects that will interact with a computer while keeping the rigor up in your instruction. And then we also, again, will have another unified classroom drop-in. These times are for you to come ask questions, get help, and just meet with us about how you're using Unified Classroom in the the classroom. Another thing to note that on the January 11th PD, that is a Friday, if you're an elementary teacher, it means that you will be going through Unified Classroom training. After that, the following Monday, there will be an opportunity to come to the PD Center, which is where all of these workshops are happening, and get some more questions answered, some help using Unified Classroom. The entire DLA staff will be available to you there. So I highly encourage you to come and take advantage of it. So that is the January We Learn, the 9th and the 16th, plus drop-in sessions after the January 11th PD. That is it for announcements today. Coming up next is our interview of the week with Catherine Bonadio. So for this week's interview, I got the chance to interview Catherine Bonadio over at Putnam, who's an English teacher, and she teaches the upper English, so English 11 and 12, and I just have to tell you, I was super excited to hear all about the things that they were doing in the classroom in regards to using technology and even the collaboration that was happening. So take a listen, and I hope that you're inspired. My 
My name is Catherine Bonadio. I've been at Roger L. Putnam for five years, and I actually taught for about a year before that at a school in Worcester, which is where I'm from. I have taught all four grades, but right for the past three years, I've been focusing primarily on juniors and seniors. So in your time in Worcester and here, was it primarily English, or did you jump around subjects, or...? I was always an English teacher. I um, definitely and predominantly forward in English <laughs> history as well, but anything outside of that, the teachers, wouldn't, yeah. kids wouldn't want me. <laughs> <laughs> in the past five years, your first year being at in Worcester, mm-hmm. can you talk about some of the differences that you yeah. have between Worcester and here as they're the two... After Boston, they're the two largest cities mm-hmm. and school districts in New England. Um, I would say the largest difference is when I was at Worcester, I was at a private school. I was at Holy Name Central Catholic. Um, but outside of that, the demographics were extremely similar and expectations were similar. So, And since I grew up in the Worcester area, I'm very familiarized with the, with kids and how they mm-hmm. act. And so it was not really super different as you would expect it to be, but it really wasn't that bad. I would say the only difference... I can even think of is just in Worcester, we're a little bit crazier. But <laughs> <laughs> So in regards to technology, what kind of, and it was a private school, if I heard you correctly, what kind of technology did you have? Um, in the private school, like zero. <laughs> we had very little. Um, we have much more technology at Putnam. <laughs> when I was at Holy Name, we had the old school um, put the DHS into the TV, which connected to a screen that you pulled down to watch videos. That was the extent of technology. And two whiteboards in the room. So coming to Putnam, where we had smart boards and where even when I started, we had a ton of laptop cards. Um, so it was a huge difference in technology. We used a bare minimum in the school I was at. And also at Putnam, we try to take advantage of the fact that our kids are plastered with their phones to their hips because mm-hmm. we try to have them use that. But in order to gain knowledge versus text their friends. Right. Wow. In five years ago, VCRs. <laughs> yes. Sorry, that's still that's going to be in my mind the rest yeah. of the day today. Yeah. <laughs> um, so coming here, uh, you obviously, as you talked about, you had smart boards, mm-hmm. and there's a whole plethora of technology mm-hmm. in the building. As an English teacher, what were some of the tools that you really first used? Mm-hmm. Um, In the beginning, I took advantage of it in small ways. Um, I understand that moving forward for these kids going into college, they're going to have to primarily be typing things. It's not a lot of handwritten work. So especially if we had a computer, I tried to use all those opportunities to have them type them. But then moving forward, I used more creative aspects. Um, In the past three or four years, my coworker and I, who actually share a room, we share all of our lessons and ideas. Um, We both kind of bounce technology ideas off of each other. She's wonderful in the classroom as well with technology. And we use things like Padlet, which is really a great opportunity. Um, We use Kahoots. We use Quizlet. Um, I'm trying to think of everything. We've been using the Mm -hmm. new Unified Classroom Power School. Mm -hmm. I actually recently rolled out last month the discussion forum. So Mm -hmm. they were able to go online and post and respond to each other, kind of like they do at a college level with Blackboard or Kodiak. Nice. And um, we also have used Storybird in the past with um, poetry. Mm-hmm. And the one thing I would love to move forward with more is using um, movie. We use Movie Maker a little bit, mm-hmm. but I have my kids make videos often. So finding maybe even a better resource to mm-hmm. use that they can use more easily on their phone outside of the building. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Microsoft Photos. That, yes. re- that replaced Movie oh, Maker. Oh, so. yes, 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 yes. And it does have all those capabilities. I'm just going to mm-hmm. toss that out Thank there. You. I remember when I was in high school. Like we had, there was like a standard English for ninth grade and 10th grade. And then once you hit 10th grade, you had the opportunity to choose like different, for lack of a better term, like different lanes Mm -hmm. for what you want to learn, whether it's you're doing a lot more poetry, like a poetry Mm -hmm. class or like creative writing, or do you guys do that here at Putnam or is it kind of like a ninth grade? 10th 11th 12th grade it's a it's so it's not our units aren't based on um sh- they're not short story than poetry mm. than this or that it's more um like based on the themes and ideas they want mm-hmm. them to learn from each piece so each unit we could be doing like poetry but then throw in a short story in that mm-hmm. unit things like that we try to compare different types of writing within each unit um i will say 
it's not so much freedom that they can mm. study Shakespearean English in mm. junior year compared to a separate group studying American studies English. It's, right. it, it varies. What I'm actually excited about, though, is this year for the first time, my friend and I who teaches history, we've been um, kind of trying out this new class called American Studies for Juniors. Mm -hmm. So they actually start with her second period in history class, and then they come to me for 3-4 for English. So we pair everything. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when I'm teaching Gatsby right now, and she's teaching the 20s. So she's teaching Al Capone and the Flappers mm -hmm. and all that. Um, and prohibition and exactly. all that, yeah. And as a history lover as well, mm -hmm. it's just so important that these kids get the context of the era that the book was written in or the mm -hmm. play or the movie or anything. So it's been really great. And moving forward, we're going into Death of a Salesman. So she's going to try to talk about post-World War II America. So it's been a great opportunity in that sense. That's mm -hmm. slightly different than our normal setup of the way English classes go. Nice. Um, so it definitely is different from when I was in school. Um, yeah. So in that class in particular, because it's two different subjects, mm -hmm. um, are there ways that you guys are collaborating together using technology? Yes. Actually, um, one of the projects, they have a coordinated project once a quarter that's actually graded by both of us. That's part history, part English. Mm -hmm. Last quarter, they had to – it was a paper base. We tried mm -hmm. to rotate paper project. Mm -hmm. um, but this quarter, it's actually – they can either write a song or rap, but they have to make like a music video version of it based off of Gatsby in connection to the 20s and the history and – or they can um, act out a scene, but they have to make it a video that they're filming. And um, I've had my kids play around with the videos a lot before. Mm -hmm. We did it with Death of a Salesman, and my kids actually made a trailer for their video mm -hmm. on top of the work. <laughs> so they actually love it because they can add music. And they, mm -hmm. the kids that made a trailer actually had, add like, critics' reviews on it. They were like, Mom said it was great. <laughs> on the, and they had, like, this really crazy That's fantastic. Music. It was cool. <laughs> That's really a great ways to integrate technology authentically into what you're doing. Instead of, here's a piece of technology, we're going to just kind of force in what we're doing yeah. to it. So those are some pretty awesome ways. Looking forward, are there tools that you're interested in learning more about how to use? I know you mentioned like focusing more with the movies, mm -hmm. but is there anything else? Well, I feel like there's always something else. Um, my husband works at Mass Mutual and is actually technology-based, mm -hmm. so... That's part of what guides me, but I've always kind of had it as well. Um, but I tend to just kind of try to move forward with technology all the time. It's just mm -hmm. like teaching. You're always learning. There's always new stuff out there. So I always just try to look up um, new poetry projects ideas mm -hmm. with technology or any unit that we're focusing on so that I can try to implement something new that's cool mm -hmm. that I didn't know before. Nice. So I know you mentioned that you're a big fan of history too. <laughs> When I went to this conference this summer called ISTE, there was one of the times we were there, one of the sessions was all about something called STEM reads, mm -hmm. where they take books and they take like the science in mm -hmm. the books and then try to apply like with the English and the science together and like how it all works and stuff. And I thought that was pretty neat, but it sounds mm -hmm. like that's coming some of the stuff you're doing with the history class yes. too. So. Yeah, I think interdisciplinary stuff is the best thing that you can possibly do mm -hmm. because um, the second students understand that this isn't such a secluded thing between mm -hmm. subjects and they can understand that they connect and they all matter and they're all making you a better, more educated person, right. then they're actually going to become more interested. Um, mm -hmm. We've had, even in our situation, in Miss Warner's class, they've been talking about Gatsby. And in my class, they'll say, oh, we just learned about that from history. So mm -hmm. I think... If you can do that in any sense, it's awesome. It always works out well. That is great. Well, we are here in Putnam. There's, like, you also have, like, the vocational shops, mm -hmm. too. Um, do you have students who go back and forth between the two shops, like, the shops and, like, what would some would call, like, the traditional mm -hmm. classes? Do you guys get a lot of crossover with that at all? or With their schedule? Yeah. It's more week to week based. Mm -hmm. So um, they'll have their shop week and then they'll have their education, their academic week. Um, 
currently I'm have my seniors, but next week I'll have my juniors. So Mm -hmm. it's different than a lot of other schools because I kind of see my kids every other week, which does propose its own challenges in the sense essentially Mm -hmm. like, especially with reading a novel, like we're reading Gatsby. So Mm -hmm. we'll finish on a chapter and then I won't see them for 10 days. So um, Mondays end up being Mm -hmm. a lot of recap usually before we keep going. And Fridays usually be a lot of um, closing where we were. Um, But it's essentially what all other teachers do just Mm -hmm. on a more grander level, I guess you could say, because you have to, because you won't see them for 10 days. But yeah, it's, it works out well because, um, the students definitely are able to compartmentalize their ideas and what they're Mm -hmm. focusing on. So they know, okay, this week I'm focusing on academics and this week I'm focusing on shop. Nice. With that 10 day stretch as an English teacher, I could see that that could become very disheartening for that when that Monday comes around and you have to recap Mm -hmm what happened 10 days ago. Do you find that you use technology a lot to kind of like keep the students up to date with so that they're doing less catch up as the year goes on on those Mondays? Yes. Um, so even just with little things that I like to use, um, Ms. Brower and I both use Remind. Mm-hmm. It's just an application where the students don't even need the app because they complain about app space on their phone. <laughs> so, um, but all it is is I get their phone numbers and then I can send out messages from the app. And for those people who are concerned that it's coming from my phone number, it's not. It's coming <laughs> from, like, an outsource number through the app. And it essentially sends them, like, whatever I want. So sometimes I'll say, hey, don't forget your honors assignment is due next mm-hmm. week. Or um, don't forget that you have a vocab quiz tomorrow. Or sometimes it can be even outside of that. Um, with our seniors, they're doing their college acceptance day. So I sent out a message saying, Make sure you get your college applications in, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. And it's actually something that they can message you privately on and ask you mm-hmm. any questions they want. And it's been a wonderful resource. Like last year, I had a student that was extremely shy um, and she didn't feel comfortable asking questions in person. So what she would do is she would go home, think about what happened in class, and then message me on Remind and ask me questions about the mm-hmm. day. And I would be able to talk to her about it. And she felt so much more comfortable. Mm-hmm. And it's just a cool opportunity where that student may have just kind of gotten left behind, but now she feels comfortable to talk about what she's struggling with. Mm-hmm. So I have to ask, because this came up in conversations yeah. that I've had recently, um, because of the use of technology and the mm-hmm. availability of it with something like Remind, do you find yourself having to say at blank o'clock hour, I'm not responding to a student or mm. do you get students who send you that text at like one in the morning? I will say I should do that. <laughs> I should do that. I've never had a one in the morning. The worst one I had recently was I had like a 10 o'clock at night and it was actually from a parent, not a student. Um, and it was just, it was a 10 o'clock at night thing. Mm-hmm. And it was something that where they wanted to know the answer right then. And <laughs> I, I know you can actually set it up on Remind so that mm-hmm. you have office hours so that you're only available until a certain time. Mm-hmm. I haven't done that yet because I haven't had a huge problem with it yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably should because <laughs> I find myself just like anybody else. I have my phone with me most times at home. And if I'm at home watching TV and a kid texts me a question at 830 at night, I'm not going to ignore it. I'm just right. going to quickly respond to them. Um But yeah, I'm sure if people were afraid of that, they could easily set it up to say, okay, and tell them in the beginning, um, my office hours are until six. If you don't message me before six, I won't see it till the morning kind of thing. Yeah. So for those teachers out there who are a little nervous, (laughs) there are ways that you don't have to respond at midnight when you get a random text being like, I have a project to do, but I need you to answer this question. Yes. So that is good. So I don't want to take up too much more of your time today. I know that we are before the snowmageddon that's going to happen that everyone is whispering about. It's probably going to be one inch after every all this time. Probably just one inch. (laughs) Maybe. 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 (laughs) So my final question that I always ask is if you could give new hires, which being in the district as long as you have – You can remember back a few years when you had to do the new hire orientation. And it's just a lot of information that you get overwhelmed with Mm -hmm. unless you wait a couple of years to do it like I did. And then you're like, I know all this stuff already. I know. (laughs) If you had the opportunity to give those new teachers or new to the district teachers um, some advice, whether it's with technology or without, what would that be? I would say my biggest piece of advice, I actually have a student teacher right now that I've been telling the same thing. And especially in our district, is it's just so important to be genuine. Mm-hmm. Um, 
in teaching in general, general, but especially in Springfield, if you aren't genuine with your kids and you don't show them that you're being real and being yourself, they won't respect you. It's just, Mm -hmm. and I will say on the opposite side of that, I've been genuine. I try to be every day and I have no problems with discipline. My kids listen to me. They respect me. I have, we have wonderful kids at Putnam. Um, so really the idea is if you show them that you're being real with them and you care about them, then all of that rapport and all of that discipline will follow suit most of the time, mm-hmm. 90%. <laughs> well, thank you for your time today. It is a very cold <laughs> and blustery day outside. So again, we thank you. Yes, of course. Thank you so much. Thank you, Catherine, for just allowing us that time to chat um, just about all the great things you're doing in the classroom and how you're connecting technology to that and making English come alive to those students there at Putnam. So we thank you for that. As we wrap up this week, you can always find me on Instagram and Twitter at Bearded Tech Ed Guy. I hope you do join and follow. There's a lot of great things, especially Twitter. There is a lot of great tools out there that can help you in the classroom as all you have to do is search. Especially if you are a OneNote user and you just type in OneNote, you'll find so many things that teachers are doing using that tool in the classroom at all grade levels. We are always looking for interviews to interview teachers who are doing great things in the classroom. While we get out to schools as much as we can, We rely on you, our listeners, to help us identify teachers who should be spotlighted and who should have the ability to share the things that they are doing in their classroom. Because as you know and I know, we are in a big school district with 2,500 teachers. They are all doing amazing things, but we don't always get to see that. And that's where we get to come in and just chat and talk and they can share what they are doing. So if you do know of somebody, you can always email us at DLA support at springfieldpublicschools.com and let us know. As this is our last podcast for the 2018 calendar year, we again just want to thank you and leave us a review out on any of the sites that you use to listen to us and share, share this podcast with all those around you. Because if you're inspired, somebody else will probably be inspired too. So again, we thank you. I'm Mike Thomas, and this is the SPS Digital Learning Hour.